Thank you, thank you. I thought I was supposed to be levitated by a group of men, kind of like how Mariah Carey does it on stage. Well, I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. I acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat, and the Anishinaabek. Indigenous people are experiencing a renaissance right now, and we are growing at a rate that is four times faster than any other demographic in Canada. You know what that means? We're just really sexy. Our plan is to overpopulate, then get our land back. Ani, Wase Nunquen Dijnikaz, Mingazed Dodem, Stephanie Pongo, Jaganashi Noswen, Wikwem Kong Minoaz Gamak Donjaba. Hello, everyone. My English name is Stephanie Ponglish, and I just introduced myself in my language. It's one of the ways that we speak to our ancestors before we begin our work. I'm also giving a heads up to my ancestors that I may be around some colonizers. <laughs> so, you know, if you could throw a little extra immunity my way, that would be great. My name is Shining Star Woman. I'm Anishinaabe and Eagle Clan from Wequemkong and Skamuk. I've been asked to speak today as an expert on Indigenous humor and resiliency from an Indigenous female comedian's perspective. Ever since I was a young girl, I would hear laughter within my friends, family, and community gatherings. You'll find us laughing in ceremony, laughing in bingo halls. Heck, we'll even be laughing in funerals. It might seem inappropriate to make jokes when Aunt Bertha's on her journey to the spirit world, but she would want to see you laughing as we're sharing memories and celebration of her life which likely includes stories of her having fist fights with her sister, or the time she accidentally threw poo on her brother. I know what some of you might be thinking. Stephanie, I didn't know indigenous people had a sense of humor. I thought you were all just political and serious. Well, we are, but we're also pretty funny. And here's why. Science is finally catching up to what Indigenous people have always known. Dr. Michael Yellowbird, Dean and Professor at the University of Manitoba, focuses on Indigenous people's health. More specifically, he focuses on the effects of colonization and methods of decolonization, neurodecolonization and mindfulness approaches, neuroscience, genetic science and Indigenous peoples, and ancestral lifestyles. Dr. Yellowbird stated that the genetic variant called 5-HTT-LPR is a gene within a lot of collectivist indigenous cultures. This is what makes us funny. We've taken misfortune and turned them into funny stories with lessons attached to it. And over the last 500 years, we've had plenty of misfortunes to draw from. Genocide, famine, displacement, residential schools, 60 scoop oppression, systemic and overt racism, but we still find a way to laugh. During the residential school era, Indian agents would come to our communities, steal our young children from their families, and take them miles and miles away to these schools where they experienced abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, and death. And some children just never made it home. My grandfather and his siblings were playing outside when they heard the Indian agents driving through the community. He took his baby sister and he ran into the bush, but his two brothers got caught. When he told his story, he laughed while looking at us and jokingly said, they were too slow. And this is his way of coping with his traumatic experience. Yes, our humor can also be dark. These were one of the many tactics used to separate us from our culture, our family, our community structure, 
our governance systems, and our ceremonies. My ancestors went underground to ensure that our ceremonies and way of life was preserved so that my generation and generations after me can live Minobomatsuin, or a good life. This life we practice seeks to find a balance within ourselves and with the beings and land around us. And that balance includes laughter. Remember that gene, 5-HTTLPR? Well, that transports serotonin, which creates feelings of happiness, serenity, and laughter. When we are actively involved in our culture through ceremony, singing, dancing, speaking our language, we experience this happiness. For example, there are over 550 nations across Turtle Island, also known as North America. We don't speak the same language. We have different ceremonies and different traditions. Yet I could go to any one of those communities and share a laugh or be teased by other indigenous people. And our culture teaches me means we love you. Scholar and activist Vine Deloria Jr. wrote, it has always been a great disappointment to Indian people that the humorous side of Indian life has not been mentioned by professed experts on Indian affairs. Rather, the image of the granite-faced, grunting redskin has been perpetuated by American mythology. Unfortunately, media usually only shows one side of livelihood, of indigenous livelihood. However, if you've ever had the chance to work in an indigenous community, you'll find yourself laughing through jokes and teasing in no time. In Western society, they say laughter is the best medicine. My people have known this since the beginning of time. At our origins, we have our creation stories that speak to the naming and the development of our world. And they are filled with silly beings, stumbling their way through existence. But these humorous mishaps have a purpose. Their mistakes, whether intended or not, have consequences and have shaped our world. These form experiences that we can, as Indigenous people, learn from and pass down with our oral traditions. Many Indigenous nations have a trickster being who explore the world experiencing comedic adventure that teach us about life. We also have contraries or sacred clowns that provide laughter through despair and will shake things up when you're feeling complacent, which will also help to keep your ego in check. So when you observe indigenous populations that currently live off the land, you don't see diabetes, depression or anxiety disorder, obesity or high rates of self-inflicted trauma. However, now there are indigenous people like me who live in the cities, anxious about talking on the phones, ordering Uber Eats and saying things like decolonization. I am my ancestors wildest dream. I stand tall on the shoulders of my relatives, no matter how much I weigh. Throughout colonial violence, we firewalled ourselves through laughter and found humor in everything. It is embedded in our culture. So I want you to take the time to understand balance within your life. With the bad comes the good. With the heartache comes the love. And you'll find yourself laughing your way to resiliency just like my people. As Vine Deloria Jr. stated, when a people can laugh at themselves and laugh at others and hold all aspects of life together without letting anyone drive them to extremes, then it would seem to me that the people can survive. Nahao, miigwech.